The z-test is used to compare means of two distributions with known variance. One example of z-tests are often useful when a sample is being compared to a population, such as when we're testing the hypothesis that a distribution of a test statistic follows a normal distribution. Uh, two sample z-tests are more appropriate for comparing the means of two samples of data. Uh, there are a few requirements for the z-test. Uh, to begin, we have the mean and the standard deviation of the population distribution are known. As well, the mean of the sample distribution is known. The variance of the sample is assumed to be the same as the population. And either the population is normal or the population size is over 30. In cases where the population variance is unknown, or the sample size is less than 30, uh, the student's t-test may be a more appropriate test. To calculate a z-test statistic, the following formula can be used. So here we have that z is equal to x, or that's our sample mean, minus mu, which is our population mean, all over the standard error. And the standard error is the standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of the sample size. Now, it's also important to bring up the idea of significance levels when we're talking about hypothesis testing. So if we remember the 66, 95, 99.7 rule, or the triple sigma rule, uh, when we use a significance level of 95%, what we're really looking at is we're looking to make sure that the observed C statistic is within the 95% range. So this is the two standard deviation range of the population mean. So accordingly, if our z statistic is not within this range, meaning that its value is greater than two standard deviations from the mean, this may provide evidence for rejecting the null hypothesis. So this is important with, with this idea that for each significance level alpha, the z test has this critical value. And if, if we're past that critical value for the z value, then there may be evidence for rejecting our null hypothesis. So let's walk through a, an example. So in this example, uh, a company is producing metal discs with a mean weight of 120 grams and standard deviation of 30 grams. Suppose we take a sample and the mean weight of 50 metal discs is 118 grams. Assuming a significance level of P is less than 0 0.05, this is alpha is less alpha is uh, 0.95, is the company correct in accepting the null hypothesis that the sample does not have different weights on average than the population of metal disks? So to begin with, we can start by stating the null and alternative hypotheses. So our null hypothesis here is that x, which is our sample mean, is equal to the population mean. The alternative hypothesis here is that x is not equal to the sample mean. So down here, I've just put together a little application where we can test this. So here we can put in our population mean, which from up here was 120, standard deviation was 30, sample size was 50, and the sample mean was 110. Or pardon me, 118. If we put all this in, we can see now on this plot here, this results in a z-value of minus 0.47. And that's well within our two standard deviation critical range. Now if we adjust the sample mean, say if we did have, we took a different sample, and we ended up with a sample mean that was a little bit lower. So we can just scroll this down. We'd have to get all the way down to, I guess, 110 to get to a critical value. So if we have a sample mean of 110, all of a sudden this would give us a little bit more evidence that that specific test statistic may have in fact come from a different distribution. Same way if we adjust the mean and we go up this way. So if we go up to, looks like just past 130, 131. Oh, pardon me, actually a little bit lower than that. 129 even. Then we're just outside the critical value range. So this means that if we have a sample uh, sample mean of 129, that in fact we will also have evidence for rejecting the null hypothesis. So there are, there are many more ways to compute these z-scores by hand. And uh, there's actually another talk I've given, uh, it's called standard scores, where you can get a little bit more detail on exactly how to compute 
these standard scores and calculate these by hand inside of Maple.